Can we begin? Yes, Your Majesty. It's time. Recording in progress. And are the Chinese devotees there? Yes, Your Honor. They are here already, and Mother Di are also translating. Okay. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalaka Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevata Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're reading the nectar of devotion and we're up to chapter number number uh, number 10 10 techniques of hearing and remembering. So we're in the process of hearing Prabhupada recount the story about a Brahmin, a, 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 a very poor man who, a very, a very poor man who heard that he could worship Krishna in his mind and get the same benefit of actually doing it. So the man did not have any par paraphernalia he didn't have any deities or anything, but just within his mind he meditated on worshipping Krishna and doing practical service for Krishna. So he would daily do things which uh, which we would do in worshipping the deity. He would do all of these things in his mind. And he did this not just once, but he did it for many years. He would do things like collect water from the holy rivers, all the different holy rivers he would go to and collect water and bring them in big pots and use it to bathe the deity. And then he would do things like uh, dress the deities and he would make flower garlands and de decorate the deities with the flowers. Then, and he would meditate on having nice perfumes to offer to the deities. And he'd do everything according to the regulative principles. So he was very pure and clean. So he was doing it for many years, and then it happened that one day the Brahmana imagined in his meditation that he'd prepared some sweet rice. So the sweet rice was, you know, rice cooked in milk and you boil the milk, you boil the rice in the milk 
and you boil it until the, the, the rice becomes soft and you don't have any water, you just cook it, the rice in the milk and you have to cook it and stir it for a long time, otherwise the rice will burn. And when the rice is soft and when the rice is cooked, then the milk of course becomes quite thick because you've been boiling the milk for some time. And then you want to add sugar to make it sweet. So then, of course, once once you've added the sugar, then you 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 know it's ready. You you, you don't have to cook it anymore. You want to offer it to the deity. But the Brahmana, the, 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 this man who was doing the meditation, he was a Brahmana, he was very poor, but he wasn't very satisfied about cooking the sweet rice because he knew that he just cooked the sweet rice a little while ago it was still very hot. So the nature of the sweet, the, when you cook sweet rice, you know, you don't want to have to eat it hot. It should be nice and cool, then you can enjoy it more. Because he'd been cooking the milk and cooking the milk and stirring the milk, so the milk gets very hot and you've got to cook the rice, so it's going to be very hot. And if it's very hot, then it would take a long time to cool down. But the Brahmana had just cooked the rice a little while ago. So he didn't like to offer it hot to the deity. So the the Brahmana he wanted to touch the the preparation, put put his finger into the milk just to see if it was really hot or not. Because if you're going to offer it to Krishna, it shouldn't be too hot because you'll burn Krishna's mouth. So the Brahmana put his finger into the, the, the milk just to see if it was hot or not. Right. In Krishna consciousness, you know, before, when you're cooking something for the deities, we don't taste it before we offer it, but you could touch it with your finger to see if it's hot or not. Uh, so the, when the man put his finger into the sweet rice, he burned his finger. Yeah, the, the milk was still so hot that when he put his finger 
into the milk preparation, his finger got burned. But the, the amazing thing is, the man was only meditating. So when he burned his finger, then he, he came out of meditation. And then when he looked, he looked at his finger and he thought it was all red, the burn, it was all burned. So he was thinking, how did this happen? Because he was thinking, I was only meditating. How is it my finger got burned? <coughs> Mm. So, uh, while he was thinking like that, Lord Narayan and Vaikuntha was watching everything. And Lord Narayan was sitting with Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, and he began to smile. He began to laugh himself. He was smiling about the whole thing. So Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, she she wondered what is her husband smiling about? What's Lord Narayan got to smile about? Must be something happening which she doesn't know. So she asked Lord Narayan what was happening, but he didn't he didn't tell her immediately, didn't reply to her. But what he did do was he immediately sent for the Brahmana. He sent an aeroplane from Vaikuntha to go and bring the Brahmana back to up to Vaikuntha to be with Lord Narayan. So when the Brahmana was before come, came before Lord Narayan and the goddess of fortune. Then at that time, Lord Narayan explained the whole story. So in this way, the Brahmana got a, he got a place in Vaikuntha and he stayed in the association of the Lord and Lakshmi in, this, in Vaikuntha, in the spiritual world. So Srila Prabhupada explains that this shows how the Lord is all pervading, He's everywhere. Although He is sitting in His own abode in Vaikuntha, at the same time He's everywhere and He knows everything. And Lord, the Lord is also in the heart of the Brahmana. And so when the Brahmana was meditating on the whole, on this, on his worship, the Brahmana was meditating on worshipping the Lord. The Lord, because he's in the heart of the Brahmana, he knew what the Brahmana was doing. So we should understand 
that if we offer something in the mind, if the devotee offers something in the mind, and if it's accepted by the Lord, then it will help us to go back to Godhead. Mm. All right, now we're going to go on to the next chapter, chapter 11, Aspects of Transcendental Service. So the first heading is called Servitorship. In the opinion of the karmis, meaning people who are attached to the results of the work, then they offer, uh, uh, they offer the results of their work that is called servitorship. So that's the opinion of the karmis, but that's not the devotee's opinion. The Vaishnava Acharyas, like Rupa Goswami, they tell us that actually servitorship means constant engagement in some kind of service to Krishna. So then Prabhupada quotes from the Skanda Purana and in the Skanda Purana it is said that those who are attached to ritualistic activities and the four orders of social life and the four orders of spiritual life, they are considered devotees. But when devotees are actually engaged in doing service for, for the Lord directly, then these, these types, these uh, are actually engaged in offering service to the Lord directly, these must be Bhagavatas or pure devotees. But those who are doing the their fruit of work, they're doing karma, and they're they're doing their prescribed duties according to the four divisions of the the social order and spiritual life. They're not actually pure devotees. But because they are offering the result to the Lord, they are accepted as devotees. They are devotees, but they are not pure devotees. But if someone has no desire, no desire to enjoy the result, but acts only out of love of God, then that person, he's a pure devotee. So conditioned souls who've come into contact with the material world, 
where we, like us, we desire to lord over material nature. So the system to divide the society into the different varnas and ashrams, then that is that is designed so that the conditioned souls can enjoy the material world. So the conditioned soul can enjoy the material world according to its desire for sense gratification. And at the same time, at the same time, the conditioned soul can gradually become elevated to spiritual understanding. So under under these different duties, according to Varna and Ashram, there are many activities which belong to devotional service. Some devotees who are householders, they will do very rituals. And they will, uh, they will also perform the prescribed duties of devotional service. So, so both things are meant for the pleasure of Krishna, whether they perform the rituals or the activities of devotional service. The idea is to please Krishna. Uh, when a householder devotee does some Vedic ritual, they do so to satisfy Krishna. Any activity which is done to satisfy Krishna is considered devotional service. And Rupa Goswami describes one who is fit for becoming engaged in devotional service. And Rupa Goswami says that people who are neophytes and who have developed a little love of God are not interested in the activities of sense gratification. The more they're attached to devotional service, the less they're attached to sense gratification. But if they still have some attachment for sense gratification, then the result of their activities should be offered to Krishna. So this is also engagement in the service of Krishna. Uh, 
In every situation, Krishna is the master and the worker is the servant. And then there's a quotation from the Naradiya Purana. And there's a statement there of how the servitorship is transcendental. So it is said there that if a person who is engaged constantly in devotional service using his body, his mind and words, or even a person who is not engaged but is simply desiring to be so, then he is considered to be liberated. <laughs> So even if we're not engaged, we're not able, if we just desire that we really want to be engaged, then that is very good, very, very good. Of course, if you get the opportunity to be engaged in service to Krishna, you must take it. Don't refuse it. All right, we go on to the next item, devotional service in friendship. So there are two types of friendship. So the first kind of friendship is where we act like a confidential servant of Krishna. And the other type of friendship is where we act as the well-wisher of Krishna. So when a devotee has confidence, it, when he's confident about devotional service to Krishna, then he will follow all the rules and regulations. And he has faith that he will come to the platform of transcendental life. Then the second type of friendship, devotional friendship, is to become a well-wisher of Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says that he accepts somebody who is preaching his glories. He accepts him as the most dear servant. Anyone who is preaching the message of the Bhagavad Gita to the people is very dear to Krishna. And there's no one equal to that person anywhere in the human society. He is so dear to Lord Krishna because he's preaching the message of Bhagavad Gita. 
เอาบุคคลผู้นั้นเนี่ยเป็นที่รักยิ่งของกิจมาพอเขาเนี่ยสอนเกี่ยวกับศาสตร์ของพระบวชคิดอะ Then in the Mahabharata, Draupadi says, she's talking to Krishna. She says, "Oh, my dear Govinda, you, your promise is that your devotee can never be vanquished." Yeah, then in Mahabharata, Draupadi ne sung that ba, Govinda thi rak, prong sung sanya ba saavok kong prong sa nami wan thu thum lai. So Draupadi said, "I believe in that statement, and therefore, in all kinds of troubles, I simply remember your promise." And Draupadi said, "Because I remember your promise, that's why I live. That's why I'm still alive." So the Pandavas, they were all the husbands. Draupadi had five husbands. They were all married to Draupadi, and they they had a lot of difficulties. And they had a lot of difficulties because of Duryodhan, because of Dhritarashtra's sons. They were always giving them trouble. And. They had so many difficulties that even Grandfather Bhishma felt trouble. He felt very sorry for them. So Bhishma was a brahmachari. He was a lifetime brahmachari, and he was a great warrior. He was a powerful shatriya. He could fight with even Parasuram. But Bhishma would sometimes shed tears. He would cry, thinking about all the troubles which the Pandavas had to go through. And he was very surprised because he knew that the Pandavas were very pious and very righteous, and he knew that Draupadi was almost like the goddess of fortune. Uh, and Krishna was their friend, but still they had to undergo so many difficulties. So the, all the difficulties they went through were not ordinary. And although Draupadi suffered a lot, she was not discouraged. She knew that because Krishna was their friend, in the end they would be victorious. They would be saved. So there's another statement also in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the eleventh canto, second chapter, text number fifty-three. 
And there you have Havis. Havis is the son of Lord Rishabdev who addresses Maharaj Nimi, who was the king, Maharaj Nimi. So Havi is one of the nine Yogendras, one of the sons of Lord Rishabdev who are preaching the philosophy, teach it, they're preaching the message of the Srimad Bhagavatam and other scriptures. So Havi says to Maharaj Nimi, he says, My dear king, a person who never deviates even for a moment from his service, then uh, who, if he never deviates from service to, to the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, then uh, If he's fir he should be, if he's firmly convinced that there's nothing more worshipable or desirable than this, then that is called the first, then he is a first class devotee. So, you can understand they're describing here the nature of pure devotional service. So first of all, he never deviates from the service to Krishna. He never serves anybody else but Krishna. And he's convinced that Krishna is the most, he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he's the most worshipable. And, and he, he desires to be engaged in the service of Krishna. So Rupa Goswami says sometimes a, a neophyte devotee means a, a new devotee, not very senior, he, he has developed a little bit love of Godhead. So he's definitely a candidate for devotional service. And one day he will become firmly fixed in devotional service. So in this way he becomes uh, fixed, he becomes very steady in his practice of Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada explains sometimes it's found that you get a pure devotee who lies down in the temple of Krishna and he lies down in the temple in order to serve Krishna just like he's a confidential friend. So that friendly behavior of a devotee can be accepted like that's like Raganuga Bhakti or spontaneous devotion. 
แล้วก็ความปฏิบัติเช่นนี้เนี่ยก็จะพัฒนาขึ้นมาเรื่อยๆจนถึงที่เราจะเรียกว่าราดานุยาบางทีหรือว่าการปฏิบัติตามกฎระเบียบ Actually, according to the principles, nobody is supposed to lay down in the temple in Krishna's temple. So, uh, this spontaneous love for Godhead, this is called devotional service in friendship. Okay, the next section is called Surrendering Everything to the Lord. So generally, full self-surrender is very difficult for an ordinary devotee. You have to be very advanced. <laughs> okay, so then... Uh, there's a description in the 11th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, 29th chapter, verse 434, where Krishna is speaking. So if a person has completely surrendered unto Krishna, and he's completely given up all other activities, then it's, he is protected by Krishna personally. And Krishna promises to protect him both in this life and in the next life also. So Krishna says, I want to help him become more and more advanced in spiritual life. And a person who has done like that, it's understood that he's already achieved the type of liberation where he has equal opulences with Krishna. This is one of the not, one of the five kinds of liberation. This is called Sharsti, which means enjoying equal opulences with Krishna. And in the Bhagavad Gita also it says that as soon as a person surrenders to the lotus feet of Krishna, then Krishna takes charge of him and gives him a guarantee of protection from all sinful reactions. So this way Krishna gives instruction from the heart so that the devotee can quickly make advancement to become perfect. So self self surrender is called in Sanskrit is called Atmanivedanam. 
เอ่อการซิโลาเนี่ยในภาษาสันสกฤตเราจะเรียกว่าอาตมานิเวดนม And according to the different authorities, the self is different, defined, is defined differently in different places. Is that your phone, Archana? On my mother's phone, Ramesh, I I turn it. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, so the this the, the self is sometimes when we talk about the self, sometimes we mean the spirit soul, and sometimes it means the mind, or it can also mean the body. เวลาเราเวลาเราพูดถึงตัวเราเนี่ยจะมนาบางครั้งอาจจะหมายถึงจิตใจหมายถึงร่างกายหรือหมายถึงดวงวิญญาณ So we should understand that when we say full self surrender, it means not only using the the soul but also the mind and the body, everything in the service of Krishna. แต่ว่าเวลาเพราะฉะนั้นเราจะต้องเข้าใจว่าเวลาเราพูดถึงการสิโลาบเนี่ยไม่ได้หมายถึงแค่เจตใจหรือร่างกายอย่างเดียวจะหมายถึงทั้งสามนี้เนี่ยสิโลาค่ะ So Bhakti Vinod Thakur he has written a song about this แต่ท่านท่านศิลปบุตรีวินอดทากูเนี่ยท่านได้เขียนบทเพลงอันไทยเราเกี่ยวกับเรื่องนี้ไว้ He is describing a fully surrendered soul การอธิบายถึงดวงยามที่He says, "My mind, my household affairs, my body, whatever is in my possession, my dear Lord, I offer to you for your service." And I say, "Well, what is the matter with you? Is it your house, your house, your body, everything, everything that you own, that you hold dear? Oh, oh, how much you love me!" เพราะฉะนั้นแล้วถ้าเกิดว่าร่องทรงปรารถนาที่จะสังหารข้าหรือร่องต้องการที่จะปกป้องข้า You are the supreme authority แล้วพระองค์เนี่ยทรงเป็นผู้ที่มีสิทธิ์อำนาจสูงสุด So Bhakti Vinod Thakur said I don't claim anything as my own it's all yours แล้ว Bhakti Vinod Thakur ท่านก็จะบอกว่าข้าเนี่ยไม่คิดว่าสิ่งเหล่านี้เนี่ยเป็นของข้าเลยข้าจะคิดว่าทุกอย่างเป็นของพระองค์โอเค then another prayer from Sri Yamuna Charya he prays to the Lord so he's expressed a similar idea in his own words และมีบทมนต์หนึ่งที่ถวายให้กองพระวันโดยท่านสิยมุนาชาริยะซึ่งเป็นข้อความคล้ายกัน Yamuna Charya was a great a c h a t devotee from the south of India, and he, at one point he was in charge of the temple in Sri Rangam. Yamuna Charya is a devotee from the south of India, and at one point he was in charge of the temple in Sri Rangam. So he prays. He said, "I may be living in the south of India, but I am not living in the south of India. I am not living in the south of India. I am not living in the south of India. I am not living in the south of India. I am not living in the south of India. I am not living in the south of India. I am not living in the south I and he said, I I don't care what kind of body. I don't mind because these bodies are just simply byproducts of the three modes of material nature. Uh, 
But whatever body I'm in, whatever body I possess, I'm going to surrender myself to you. Then in the Hari Bhakti Vilas, then there's a statement about how one can offer his body in self-surrender. So there the devotee says, My dear Lord, as a sold-out animal has no need to think about his maintenance, and sustenance. So because I have given up my body and soul unto you, I am no longer concerned with my maintenance and sustenance. <laughs> So what he's saying is, he said, we, we should not worry about our own personal maintenance or about our family maintenance or anything. If someone is actually surrendered in the body and in the soul, then he should always remember that his only concern is to be engaged in the service of Krishna. So Rupa Goswami says devotional service in friendship and devotional service in self-surrender are two difficult processes. They're both difficult processes. So we very rarely see people come to that platform where they're able to have that kind of relationship with the Lord. So these two processes, to be the friend and to surrender everything, they're only for advanced devotees. So it's very rare to see surrender that is mixed with pure devotion. You have to give yourself up completely to the will of Krishna. All right, then the next item, offering a favorite article. In the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th chapter, verse 41, Lord Krishna tells Uddhava how to do this. So Krishna said to Uddhava, he said, if somebody offers me the best thing in his possession or anything that is very pleasing to him, then he will be eternally benefited by giving it to me. So, 
ที่เขามีอยู่หรือสิ่งที่เขาชื่นชอบมากเขาจะได้ประโยชน์นี้รันดอร์ Alright next item performing all endeavor for Krishna รายการต่อไปก็คือพยายามทั้งหมดเพื่อ Krishna Wait, I'm a bit worried here. Let me put the light on. All right. So uh, next item, performing all endeavors for Krishna. So from the Narada Narada Pancharatra, there's a statement of how one can act in all spheres of life for the satisfaction of Krishna. So it is stated there that a person who is actually in devotional service must be engaged in all kinds of activities. So there are two different kinds of activities. There are activities which are described in the scriptures, and there's also activities which you have to do for your livelihood. Uh, so a devotee has to not only do the duties of devotional service, which are described in the scriptures, but he also has to do the duties of his practical life, just to maintain his life in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> And Prabhupada said a devotee who has a big factory or a big building, he may offer the fruit of the material work for the service of Krishna. So you can see devotee doesn't give up his work. He continues to work. He works and he has to do both his work and he has to do his devotional service. They both go on side by side. We say just like a train goes on two tracks, you have to have one track for the material work and one track for the spiritual work. So they have to be balanced. If the tracks are not level, then you'll overturn. Alright, so we'll stop here today.
Ask if there's any questions. I have one question, Ramaraj. Oh, really? Yes, it is. Where you mentioned about the, you know, when we have to offer the things we like. Yes. So, what, what is it, Ramaraj? You mean the food or what? what is the thing we like? Well, it? yeah, it may be food, it may be flowers, it may be, uh, I don't know, yeah, you, you may have a, even a jewel you like. You may give some jewel you, you like very much, your necklace, you can give that to the deity, maybe like that, you know? Mm. Okay, okay. Maybe you have a, a nice, maybe you like a, a particular oil or fragrance perfume, you can offer that for the deity. Um, okay, then. Whatever things, what do you like? What's your favorite? I don't know. <laughs> I like durian. Oh, you like durian? Well, you can offer that to Krishna, yeah. If you like, you yeah. offer it to Krishna. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Guru, thank you. We have all questions to อ่าในวัตถุอยู่ค่ะมีอันนี้ก็ได้ยินไม่ชัดเลยค่ะอ่าบ้างนะบ้างนะอันไหนที่พูดเลยค่ะได้ยินดีมั้ยอะไรกัน
can I mute you for a minute because I think your background noise is quite loud. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, and and then you can hear what what she speak. Okay. okay and then you can unmute your tablet. Ah, uh, people like her. Ah, ah, Rishya, Rumaj. Um, nowadays I uh I avoid every sinful activity to dealing about my material world. And uh, I try to surrender uh, myself about my mind, my soul, and my body to Krishna Guru Maharaj. How do you surrender your mind, body, and soul? Uh, How do you surrender your mind, body, and soul? Um, I always think about like uh, my body belong to him, my mind um, take shelter and obeisances um, to Lotus Street, and my soul always um, belong to it also. About that, is it, it enough, Guru Maharaj, or can you advise me more? Well. Yes, it's it's nice if you're if you're genuine in your thinking like that. If you're really sincere and you really feel like that, then it's good. Thank you. Uh huh. And um, um, I request um uh, my material to to be like um. Maybe I got some chance to preaching to give Krishna to everyone. Mm -hmm. And please mercy me, Guru Maharaj. Please face me. Mm -hmm. I will try my best everything to Krishna. Okay. May Krishna bless you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Next question. Uh, you are the uh, material conception of favor is uh, balanced in the Supreme Lord. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, because uh, the Supreme Lord uh, uh, doesn't have material ego, uh, false ego. Can you can you say this again? In the Srimad Bhagavatam, what? Ah uh, yes, in, in Srimad Bhagavatam it says uh, that um, in the material conception of ego is equibalanced in the Supreme Lord. And what does it mean? Because Supreme Lord uh, doesn't have false ego. No, doesn't have false ego, but the pure ego is there. All right, there's no false ego, but the pure ego. The pure ego is there. Pure ego un is understanding that Krishna is the master and all others are the servants. And so Krishna understands himself perfectly in relation to the living entities. He's the well-wisher of all the living entities and he does his best to help everyone. So his ego is perfectly controlled. He doesn't. He doesn't have false ego. So that's an indication to you that his ego is perfectly balanced. It's pure ego. Mm -hmm. the, yes, Guru Maharaj. And uh, does he uh, does he has, uh, does he have material ego? Well, <coughs> there's not there's nothing material in Lord Krishna. It's not material because it's in relation to Krishna. It must be spiritual. But in, it's in, for, for the material world, the Lord's appearing in this world to perform His pastimes, and He's performing His pastimes without any false ego. Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He comes in this world, right? He appears in this world, the material world. So he's in the world, but he's not attached to it, and he's not identifying with it. Although he is the proprietor and the master of everything, but he's renounced. 
he's in control of his ego. You know, we would become very proud and very full of ego that this is mine, I'm the Lord, I'm the proprietor. But Krishna doesn't think like that. Krishna remains controlled within his mind. Now it's clear. Thank you very much for your explanation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Archana? Yes, Ganesh. Zarine, when you got harm to Kwam, yes, so, Kwam Mahanta, Naha, Waman Penny, that's a penny, and I said, in the Gumara, he buy a book. A hunkan, he had singing, and Mazami Hankan, he might make two pong of the hands, a hunkan, he keep up the name and got ham, you have the name and food for whom. แต่อาหารการที่ถูกต้องก็คือการมีความมั่นใจเกิดกับความรู้ที่เรารู้ว่าพระเจ้าเนี่ยเป็นผู้ควบคุมสูงสุดแล้วก็พระองค์จะเป็นผู้สมรสจัดการทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างอันนี้เนี่ยก็ถือว่าเป็นความมั่นใจแล้วก็ในอาหการแบบรูปแบบที่ถูกต้องแต่แบบไม่ถูกต้องก็คือคิดว่าตัวเองเป็นผู้กระทำหรือว่าเป็นผู้ควบคุมนั่นเองนะคะ alright next question สตรีเดบีมาอาริชนาบุรุมาราชพิเศษสัมมาบุโลบุสุสุสอัลบาริสุสรีลาบุรุปาดบุรุมาราชมาคุชิลิสติการิงดีดีดีเซลฟ์เซเรนเดอร์เ
ก็คือเราควรที่จะใช้จิตใจนั้นดับแรกเนี่ยต้องใช้จิตใจไปในการระลึกถึงพระบาทรูปบวชของคริสนา And our soul is also a part of Krishna. We're tiny parts of Krishna, right? We're tiny. We're little jeev atmas, very small, like sparks coming from the fire. And we have an eternal connection to Krishna. แล้วก็แล้วก็ดวงวิญญาณของเราเราเนี่ยเดิมแท้เราเนี่ยก็เป็นผู้รับใช้ของคริสนาแล้วเป็นส่วน So we want to connect our soul to Krishna. The soul also has desire, and we want to desire simply for the service of Krishna. We want to connect our soul. To the supreme soul. We have to recognize Krishna's desire and do what Krishna wants, and then use our soul to do that to surrender to Krishna. So in this way, everything, all different aspects of the self, the three levels of the self, the body, the mind, and the soul, they're all connected to Krishna, and for the service of Krishna. And in this way, it will make all the bodies, the mind, and the soul. Uh, mm. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Okay, Hare Krishna. Krishna Guru. Yes. Okay, Guru Maharaj. The next question is, uh, what shall we make? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance as I'm glorious to Shri Lakshmi. Um. <coughs> I, Guru Maharaj, we read in the beginning that um, if we have a little attraction for sense gratification, then the result of such activity should be offered to Krishna. Yes. Um, yeah. Can you please give an example of this, Guru Maharaj? How how is this little? Yeah. How we can do this little attraction for sense gratification? Then we offer the result to Krishna. All right. Someone may have an attraction for uh, his work, making money, doing business, or working in a job. You make money, you like that, you enjoy it. And so we should offer some of that results. The, the work, you know, the results, the, the salary, the money which we receive in payment for our labor. We should give some of that for Krishna. We should recognize Krishna and offer something to him for his pleasure. That's one yeah. example, yeah. and similarly, yeah. similarly, you may be attached to uh, cooking. You like to eat something, some things you you like, you know. So you have to offer yeah. you have to offer that to Krishna. Okay. Right, whatever you cook, you know, you like you like you know you like your Italy and dosa yeah. and sambar and yeah. kurma and colombo and yeah. everything, you know. Yeah. So you offer yeah. them to Krishna. You know, you don't just yeah. cook them and eat them, but we offer them to Krishna. Ah, uh, yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. Recognize yeah. Krishna. Yeah. Okay, but this is not pure devotion. It is. Uh, well, if you offer the results to Krishna, that is karma yoga. Karma yoga. Yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes. Yes. And it's not, it's not far away from pure devotion. It will definitely bring us to pure devotion. Mm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. And also very surprised by the statement from the Nar Naradiya Purana that uh, even a person who is not practically engaged but is simply desiring to be so is considered to be liberated. 
Yes. Because you, you see, Every, yes. Because the desire is so strong that they really want to be engaged. So that desire itself is very purifying. Yes, Kumaras, yeah. Somebody, they, they really want that, they have that desire. They do, and so they're thinking about it all the time, that they would like to do this. Oh, that, that's very wonderful, very nice. Krishna's very pleased. You see, you have to understand what liberation means. It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to go back to Godhead. But it does, yes. it does mean they get out of the modes of nature. They get out of passion and ignorance because they're thinking about service to Krishna. Then from the liberated platform, then they can take up devotional service. You see, they've come to that position, they've come, they've got to that liberated platform, now they can begin real devotional service. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. We have a devotee here, Guru Maharaj. Uh, he, she is very new and she tell me that uh, Every moment she wanted to think how to spread the holy name here. Oh. Is it a mode of passion or it's a really, uh, uh, she is very enthusiastic. Every moment she thinks how we can make the programs, how we can put the bookstall in the uh, uh, open market like that. It's uh, also this uh, desire purifying. Yes, very much. Very, very good. Is that the girl from... Uh... M Mon Mongolia? Mongolia? Yeah. Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. Did you get her to, yeah. did you tell her about doing the disciple course? Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. I said to her, she tell me, yeah, she want to do it, but she tell me for Mongolian people, there is no, they said it's a concession for them, no disciple course. Her Siksha Guru tell, but she want to do because we tell her she wanted to do. Well, you can get contact the people at Radha Desh. They will do it. Radha Desh, okay. Yeah, definitely okay. Radha Desh, they do it. They have the disciple course. Okay, Guru Maharaj, yeah. Yes. And then uh, this chapter, I find it a bit difficult to understand, Guru Maharaj. Maybe I have to read it again or uh, Yeah. One Little of, love of Godhead or... Yeah, sorry. Which one? This chapter is a bit difficult or maybe I feel like that. The one about transcendental service? Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> What's the difficulty? No difficulty. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Little confusing about the pure devotee. A person follows the Varnashrama system is not a pure devotee. Little love of God. Yes, like that it's a bit... Uh, yes. Who is pure devotee? Yeah. Because they didn't have the desire to actually do anything for Krishna. They're simply following just simply material duties. There's no, there was no thought really of, of the Lord. Oh, okay. But, but they are also doing spiritual duties side by side, but uh, the desire is different. Yeah, they didn't have the real dedication or devotion to the Lord. They, they were just doing it as, you know, this is a practice, this is a culture. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just following the tradition of the yeah. family, like well, that. Like that, yeah, more mechanical. Yeah, okay, get it, got it, Guru Maharaj. And th there is a little love of Godhead. What is what is little love of Godhead, Guru Maharaj? Do we have it or...? <laughs> there, what does it say? Little love of Godhead. Godhead, little love of Godhead. What is it, means, Maharaj? Means not much, not much love of Godhead. Yeah, but we, do, we are all doing chanting. It's little love of Godhead, or no? Yeah, yeah. It means they don't have very much love of Godhead. Where was it exactly? Okay. Where Where was it? In the beginning, Guru Maharaj, spontaneous love of a neophyte in the beginning. Okay, I read that for you, Guru Maharaj, maybe. I read it. But where is it? In servitorship? In the beginning. Be yes, in the beginning. First, first, yes. first topic. Uh, uh, 
Okay, he says that uh, Srila Rupa Goswami, it's a, uh, which paragraph I tell you? It's a uh, third, third paragraph. Third paragraph, okay, Rupa Goswami yes. describes one who is fit for engaging in devotional service. He says that per persons who are neophytes and who have developed a little love of Godhead are not interested in the activities of sense gratification. Okay? So he's talking about a new devotee, a neophyte. So yeah. they haven't advanced very much, but they have some love of Godhead. They have some love of Godhead, not a lot. And it's a question of uh, how much love of Godhead they've got will determine how much they're interested in sense gratification. Yeah, yeah. Yes, if they're, they if they're yes. still attached to sense gratification, then they don't have much love of Godhead. But if they've lost the interest in sense gratification, then they have, a, they have more, they have stronger love of Godhead. Perfect. Okay, yeah, Guru Maharaj, I get it. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, but, they, but finally they are telling devotional service in friendship and self-surrender is very difficult. Yes. Very difficult. To surrender everything is very difficult. And similarly, it's not so easy thing to just become an intimate friend of Krishna. To make Krishna your friend. To become friend of Krishna. It requires a lot of devotion. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. You know, but we aim for that or no? We should not. Well, we should aim for hearing and chanting. We concentrate yeah. on hearing and chanting and remembering. Okay. That's the basis. Okay. That's the root. We can't get the roots right, then the other things will come gradually. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Very clear. Okay. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare. Very kind of you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Uh, there is a question in the chat box also, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. You can read. Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Question. When we preach and someone becomes a devotee, or we preach to make someone into a devotee, but then we also say that our love should be unconditional. But then if somebody stops practicing devotional service, then we don't show so much affection for that person. So when we preach, what should be our motive? Is it that just for our self-motive that we get blessings from Guru and Krishna or to help that person to become better or to help that person and to become an ISKCON devotee? From uh, Himalaya Joshi. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Well, uh... We should, when, when somebody stops becoming a devotee, we should feel something, we shouldn't lose interest in them. Rather, we should be concerned for them, for their welfare, and we should encourage them and try to encourage them to remain active in devotional service. We don't like to see anyone go away from Krishna consciousness. And we should beg them to please stay and continue in Krishna consciousness. Yes, we do like to see people in ISKCON, but we're not against other things. If people are in other groups, okay, then we don't mind. You know, I've, I've brought people to Krishna consciousness and I've seen sometimes they go away and join other societies. Okay, I don't have any problem. I offer my blessings to them. If you're happier there, then go ahead. If you're finding Krishna consciousness better in the other association, then you go ahead, you do it. Okay. I don't mind. But, of course, we feel glad that we helped them in the beginning, that we sometimes we initiate them, we get start them off, and then later on then they may go away to some other group. All right. What can be done? You know, we don't have monopoly over Krishna consciousness. That's the point. We know there are other Krishna conscious societies. 
Is it all right? Himalaya Doshi? Arjuna? Uh, yes, Lord Arjuna. Okay, I will, I will just translate that. เอ่อคําถามนะคะของโพลีแทมเนี่ยเขาถามว่าถ้าจะรับเราเนี่ยขอให้คนคนนึงเนี่ยมาเป็นชั้นที่สํานึกเราแล้วก็ให้ความรัก